Hey y'all, today we're gonna make a delicious soul food meal with some candy yams, mac and cheese, buttermilk fried chicken, cornbread, and green beans. Y'all, if you are making this meal for your family, they need to be doing something special for you, okay? Because this is gonna take a little bit of time but it's so going to be worth it. As you can see, I am cleaning my chicken. I'm using chicken wings here. I risk them with some water, a little bit of vinegar, and I'm just scrubbing them with some lime. You can use any cut of chicken that you like. I rinse it off just to make sure there's no feathers or any dirt or anything like that. You want to clean your sink and make sure, of course, you wash those hands. One thing is for sure is that we are seasoning this chicken down to the bone. Okay. Y'all that don't be putting no seasonings on your chicken, salt, pepper, and garlic pep powder chicken, mm -mm. we don't do that. I see you, okay? And I'm trying to come for you and encourage you to use some flavor. As you see, I've already gone in with some Maggie seasoning, a little bit of bouillon, and I'm using some Lyra's. Y'all know we love some Lyra's on that chicken. I'm putting on some ginger powder, and as well as some black pepper, and some rosemary. You gotta go in with the herbs on the chicken. I also love to use some sage and thyme on the chicken, this salt-free Cajun seasoning, which I've showed y'all how to make already, and some garlic that I've busted. Now, the garlic, the sage, the thyme, we are just busting that and crushing it so that we can get the flavor. All right, it's going to infuse into the buttermilk and it is going to give a nice taste, but we're not gonna fry that because they're fresh ingredients and they're really just gonna burn in the oil. You don't need to douse your chicken in buttermilk, okay? Just put a little bit, cover it enough, and that is enough to get your chicken tender. I see some people pouring in the whole cow, trying to tenderize that chicken. It's not needed, all right, just cover it. And then put a little hot sauce in for the little flavor. Even if you don't like spicy food, add the hot sauce. It gives flavor, it's not spicy, not gonna burn your mouth just seasoning down to the bone of course when you want that chicken right you gotta marinate it overnight so cover it and let it sit in the fridge i'm using four medium-sized sweet potatoes for my candy yams two large sweet potatoes would be perfect here peel them top and tail these pieces and cut into a half an inch thickness of rounds In a hot pan, I'm adding three tablespoons of salted butter and a half a cup of brown sugar. I really do not like super sweet yams, but if you do, use about three-fourths of a cup to one cup of brown sugar instead. Let this candy and caramelize for about three minutes, stirring it constantly, and then go on with your spices. I'm using cinnamon here, fresh ginger for that delicious fresh flavor i'm grating in some fresh nutmeg okay and i'm just doing this to my own taste i'm going to stir this up into that buttery sugar mixture and then i'm adding a capful of vanilla extract you have to really candy the sugar and the butter hence the name candy yams right it's going to add a different layer of flavor then in goes your sweet potatoes now it's going to be tempting to add some water. Don't do it, okay? Yams produce a lot of water on their own. So all you need to do is turn your heat down to low. On an electric stove, mine is at about like a two or a three. Put on your top and let it just simmer for about 45 minutes undisturbed. It will produce its own water. Look, y'all, my macaroni and cheese is the you can bring the mac at Thanksgiving good. And one of the secrets is cooking those noodles in some chicken broth. Today I'm gonna do a roux for my mac and cheese. So I'm putting in half a table, half a stick of butter with two tablespoons of flour. We're going to toast this flour to give it a nice flavor. It's gonna cook out the rawness and it's gonna be a perfect thickener for the roux. After about a minute or two, this is what it will look like. And then I'm going in with a full can of evaporated milk. 
I think this adds a nice flavor over just using whole milk because it's so creamy and concentrated. And then one and a half cups of heavy cream. Mm, got to use heavy cream, guys. Okay, the fat content will change your mac and cheese. Use eight ounces of your favorite cheese. Today I'm using Kobe Jack, but anything that you like would be perfect. To flavor my roux, I'm using some Cajun seasoning just to taste, as well as some hot sauce. I'll be adding a little garlic powder and black pepper later on, but you just have to do this to taste, guys. Okay, it's whatever you like. At this point, I thought my roux was a little bit thick. So I went in with half a cup of water, but chicken broth would be the perfect thing to use here. And I'm adding eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese to enhance that cheesy flavor. And then I'm going to go in with my noodles. At this stage, the roux is perfect. So, you know, you could just let this just be stovetop mac, but mm -mm, we're going to fight if you like stovetop mac because I only do baked mac. Okay. You ain't invited to the cookout. No, I'm just playing with you guys. Y'all all can come, right? But I just really like baked mac. So into my pan, I am going to add all my noodles and all of this delicious cheesiness. In the comments, guys, let me know if you enjoy me doing these full meal episodes or if you just want me to stick to doing one dish at a time. I would really enjoy you all's feedback. Or if you have anything that you want me to make, just let me know in the comments. Of course, I'm gonna go in with my sharp cheddar cheese on the top. I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I'm gonna bake this mac and cheese for about 25 minutes. Next up, we gonna fry this chicken, y'all. Okay, now to get a extra crispy fried chicken coating, you need a starch. Today I'm using potato starch, but corn starch would work. Of course, you're going to need flour, and I'm just putting in about half a cup of that starch. Season your flour with the salt-free Cajun seasoning, a little bit of seasoning salt, just do that to your own taste. Some garlic powder, a little bit of white pepper. I'm also going to use thyme for an herbal note and then I'm going to add my lid onto my flour bin and I'm just going to mix it. If you would like to do this in a plate, feel free. I've let my chicken sit out for 30 minutes to come to room temperature and then I'm going to shake off the fresh herbs and the fresh garlic and the buttermilk. I'm going to toss it into my container, shake it vigorously to coat it with flour and I'm going to set it aside on the plate. Now when you take it out of this Tupperware, you need to make sure that you knock off all of the excess flour. If you don't knock it off, it is going to actually fall just into your cooking oil. It's going to burn and leave your oil with a really bad taste. I'm going to do the rest of my chicken the same way, adding it to my flour, shaking the coat, and then putting it on my plate to rest. I allow my chicken to sit for about 10 to 15 minutes so that the coating will become moist. You need to do this so that it will stick to the batter. If you would like a extra crunchy coated chicken, after it sits, dip it back into your buttermilk and then toss it back into the flour again. I didn't do all of them this way, but I just wanted to show you three of them as an example if you really like that double coated crunchy chicken. And of course, just let it sit. Fill up whatever you're gonna fry in with canola oil or vegetable oil and allow it to come up to about 350 degrees. I test mine with a chopstick and then I'm putting all the little chicken wings in the pool, y'all, okay? Only four, don't overcrowd it. If you are using chicken legs or chicken thighs, you can fry that as well. To fry the chicken wings, I only fry them for about 11 minutes. 
if you're doing chicken legs, is going to take about 13 to 15 minutes. Thighs are going to take about 15 to 16 minutes because they're a little thicker, especially if you're doing those really big pieces of chicken. I really suggest you fry dark meat because it's going to be juicier unless you're using chicken breast to say do chicken tenders. Between batches, clean out your oil and then I'm setting mine aside on a rack. Y'all see that newspaper? Okay, went old school on it. Okay, no paper towels today. Okay, now my green beans are going to be semi homemade. Just using a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, that Cajun seasoning, better than bouillon. I drained out the can and I'm going to just cook and warm up these green beans and the, all the seasonings and all the flavor. I really didn't want to do fresh green beans after I went through all of this, all of what I was doing today. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Your family's going to love it. Add a little butter to your candy yams right there at the end just to give it that delicious flavor. And guys, do you see this crunchy chicken? So crunchy. Sweet candy yams, delicious green beans. I've showed you guys how to make that buttermilk cornbread in a different video. Macaroni and cheese, gooey, delicious, right? This is a full spread. Now, of course, I'm gonna show y'all how this mac and cheese looks. Mm, it is so good. It is so cheesy. Do you see this? Do you see this, guys? Wow. These candy yams are perfectly seasoned for me. Not overly sweet. Those green beans have a great flavor. You'd love them even though they're from the can. It doesn't matter. It's so delicious. Guys, I hope you enjoy this meal. Share it with someone you love. Know that God loves you and I love you too. And I'll see you next time on Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye.